equal pay for comparable work. Labor experts predict this will be the civil rights issue of the decade. At issue, whether women should get the same pay for work which may be different, but just as demanding as that done by men. Phyllis Slapley, who spearheaded a successful campaign to defeat the Equal Rights Amendment, opposes the equality pay concept. For it is Diana Rock of the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, an organization now waging some successful legal battles on the front. Let me begin with you, if I can, Diana Rock. What do we mean by comparable pay? In 1964, the Civil Rights Act said it was illegal to di discriminate in compensation. Uh, since then, 20 years, there's been no narrowing of the gap between the salary that men make and the salary that women make. Comparable worth and pay equity are sort of buzzwords uh, for the kinds of court cases and studies that are going on to document why this discrepancy happens. Why are you for it? What is the basic issue that makes you in support? Our union represents about, well, first of all, it's illegal and it's unfair to discriminate against women in compensation, and that's why I'm for it. Our union, AFSCME, represents almost a half a million working women that work in these, these basically sex-segregated jobs, the jobs that we feel are underpaid. And you're opposing it? Well, I think that's very misleading, Charlie. I do not oppose the e equity pay concept, as you said in your introduction. I am for pay equity. I believe in equal pay for equal work and enforcing it and enforcing it aggressively. Uh, what we are talking about here is having uh, some people, some anonymous persons, look in a crystal ball and say, ah, yes, a laundry worker and a truck driver get the same number of points, uh, therefore they should get the same pay. Or having uh, this, this uh, anonymous person look again in the crystal ball and say, a nurse gets twice as many points as a carpenter or an electrician, therefore she should get uh, that much more money. Now, I think you're talking about questions that uh, are not objective. They are subjective uh, conclusions as to what these people are worth. So your opposition to comparable pay or pay equity is the subjective judgment that is necessary to determine what is comparable. That is one of the objections. The second objection is that when they make their subjective judgment, they divorce it completely from prevailing market rates. And I think that uh, market rates are the best guarantee of equity because it's the result of thousands or millions of individual decisions of individuals and unions of individuals deciding what people are willing to work for and what employers are willing to pay. If, if the market rate were fair and non-biased, we wouldn't have had to pass child labor laws, the minimum wage law, we wouldn't have had to pass the Equal Pay Act if the market uh, were unbiased. The reason we needed those laws is because the marketplace did discriminate against a lot of people. Yes, and, and if we the marketplace base, If the marketplace paid on the basis of uh, the shortages of jobs, I wonder why nurses, uh, clearly there's a shortage of nurses all around the country, and rather than raise the salary of nurses, uh, hospitals have chosen to import them from foreign countries, have a lot of nurses working basically part-time shifts because they simply can't find enough nurses to work full-time, yet they're unwilling to raise the salary to uh, meet the need. But look, you're not paid in this country on the basis of what you're worth. I'm sure you're worth more than you're being paid, and most people think they are. Uh, but why, for example, are lawyers paid more than ministers? Do you think lawyers are worth more than ministers? Or why are uh, football players and tennis players paid more than soccer players and volleyball players? Because another, that's what the market determines. That's right. That's what the market determines. Well, another important And the alternative thing, to that is to have uh, some government entity or some court come in and decide. And there's absolutely no reason to think that that would be more equitable than the market. Will you grant me that certain, a lot of women are making making less pay than men in roughly comparable jobs. No, I you, won't You won't you even that. accept that. No, women, women do make different pay from men because women choose to go into different occupations. Uh, but uh, the basic element of this thing is a, is a desire to bring down the blue-collar man to the same pay level as the woman who works in an indoor safe occupation. Well, well, are they talking about bringing somebody's wages down or simply No, they're talking about raising everybody. Benefits. Sure, they want to raise everybody. But when you have to sell a product at a certain cost figure to meet your competition, or when you have a certain one of, state budget, 
then how are you going to how are you going to uh, meet your budget? One of the incredible myths about pay equity that's perpetuated by those people trying to use scare tactics to undermine it is that we'll bring down men's salaries. That's totally untrue, and it's basically illegal under cases like the Washington State case to lower anybody's salary. Our union also has more than 500,000 uh, male employees, basically blue collar, and they support this idea overwhelmingly. They're not afraid of it because well, I'm in sure a blue collar household, may, may, may I finish mm -hmm. my thought? In a blue collar household, often 60% of those households are two paycheck households, and they need the woman's paycheck and the man's paycheck simply to make ends meet. Men are going to be pleased when they see women's salaries coming yeah, up. Yeah, but if you listen to the rhetoric of them, uh, they are always complaining that the blue collar man who may not have a college degree is getting more money than the woman who works in an inside safe job and who may have a business school certificate or a nursing certificate. And this line of envy against the blue collar man runs oh, through listened to all the hearings. Just not true. And they're all complaining that the man, like the electrician. Well, well, let me see plumber, if I understand your argument. Your argument goes down to the basis that, in fact, people who have hazardous jobs, men who have had long experience on the job and are in hazardous jobs, are being asked receive the same pay as people who have safe jobs simply because those people have a diploma of some kind? That's the essence of comparable worth. That's why you no. have the word comparable. No, no, no. They are trying to compare nurses and electricians, or nurses and plumbers, or secretaries and truck drivers. That's the essence of what the word comparable means. Last word to Diana Ross. Comparable worth is comparing the composite skills required in a job, the training, the education, the environment, the years of experience required of the very specific job that's being discussed, not this kind of global thing that you're talking about where you compare things with a variety of employers. It also only applies to the internal relationship within one employer. Diana Rock, thank you very much. Thank you, Phyllis Lafley, for joining Nightwatch. We'll continue in just a moment. Stay with us. I get your acceptance of this idea that the marketplace does, Phyllis Lafley, occasionally discriminate and it does discriminate against women and when that happens it is illegal and you are in favor of not happening. Uh, I am in favor of equal pay for equal worth which is decided by looking at an individual doing the same work as another individual. But I am same not... work has to be exactly the no, same job. No, it doesn't. According to the law it only has to be substantially the same. I'm but sorry, this... but that's not quite true either. The Gunther decision clearly said that you can compare totally dissimilar jobs. What was the well, Gunther well, the decision? Gunther the decision. Gunther decision was a Supreme Court decision in 1981 of a, uh, a court matron in uh, Oregon that said you can, that clearly said for the first time that you can compare totally dissimilar jobs under the Civil Rights Act. As I remember that decision, instance, it said a court, matron, a court matron was comparable to a... A uh, male guard, is that That's correct? That's correct. But the court specifically said it was not adopting the controversial comparable worth theory. But it in no way rejected it because the comparable well, worth theory right. is that up, you can compare to similar right, but jobs. But the court, it is not the law today. Yeah. What these people are trying to do is make it the law through litigation. They the have, Supreme Court decision made it the law of the land. No, no, the Supreme Court said we are not adopting comparable worth. All they said was you can sue, which we are doing. Let me which you are doing. But, in, but look, the, you've got the matter of this, of uh, deciding what is equitable and what are these points. Now, right. in the Illinois case, they set up a point system. We're not going to consider the marketplace. We're not going to consider the union negotiations. You're talking about the Illinois case or the Washington State case? The Illinois case. Okay. And they came up with a point system that said that nurses should be paid the same as electricians. Right. But in order to arrive at the same points, they rigged the system so that the maximum number of points that you can get for adverse working conditions is 10%. Now, the question is, will you, Diana, accept my point system, or must it be your point system? And I is, think that's, that's the question. That's a good question. Matter, or or said better, excuse me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As a matter Who of fact, determines the point system? In, in a uh, non-biased marketplace, uh, the, the, uh, the, the employer would. As a matter of fact, in the Washington State case that you referred to, it was the employer that hired the consultant that came in and But it was the, the consultant the who set the point. No, that's not true. The employer had total control over the methodology that was used. I used to be a personal director, right. and I rewrote the compensation plan for a bank. 
And, and it is a very common methodology to use a point factor system to establish the internal relationship. But now, it is there, not, may be, there may be a disagreement over whether it's 120 points or 18. Just ask me, just tell me if you will accept the point system that I draw up. If for the people that you employ, if it's non-biased, No, 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 yes. no. I'm an interested party in the state of Illinois. I'm a taxpayer in Illinois. Will you accept the point system that I draw up? Let me see it and I'll tell you. Well, but the point of the law yeah, is that's what the employer yeah. sets up. Not oh, no. What you oh, think no. The employer did okay, not set it up. Let's clear this air a little bit by asking you what are some examples frequently cited of comparable worth? Well, in the Washington State case, for instance, a, um, a laundry worker and a truck driver. Now, again, in any of these cases, you need to look. The first thing you do when you do a pay equity study yeah. is get current position descriptions that the employee and the employer agree that this accurately describes the job and skill, mm -hmm. responsibility, and that sort of thing. So even when you say a secretary, a secretary for one employer might be required, as in Washington State, to have two foreign languages and, and wouldn't in another okay, state. Give me so some other these... comparisons in Washington well, State. On that point, Charlie, you know, of course, that point system did come up with the result that the laundry workers should be paid the same as the truck driver. And you're against that because the marketplace should determine what it's each should It's a subjective make. judgment. Now, you and somebody else may think the truck driver has a lot more hazardous work to do and, and et cetera, but and et cetera. See, that, but it is a subjective judgment. Well, how do you feel about that? Should um, a laundry person... I'm not person... trying to set wages. They're trying to set wages. Yeah. apart from what people are willing to work for and people are willing to do pay. Do you have some feeling this is a radical scheme to redistribute wealth in sure America? Sure do. Absolutely. It's and a radical scheme to have federal wage control. And, but you have also said that it violates the traditional role of the family. And you have said that you believe that a, the male should make more than the female because the male is the provider in the I, family. No, I didn't say that. I've I said I believe in equal pay for equal work. You said in written testimony before uh, Senator Hatch's committee that we want a society in which the average man earns more than the average woman so that his earnings can ful fulfill his role as provider and providing a home and support for his wife who is nurturing and mothering That is a children. very different thing from what you said. The average man so. does earn more than the average woman today. But you and said the that's reason, the appropriate And role. the reason for that is because married women, on the average, spend only one-third of their potential earning years in the labor force, and they spend those other years in the care and nurturing of their children. And yes, we do think that is a social good, and that is the society that we live in. But that has nothing to do with discrimination on a particular job. That's on correct. A, on a given job, I believe in equal pay for equal work. Okay, let me just let you sum up in the end, because you are in favor of comparable worth. You're in favor of it because you think that too many women in America are being discriminated against because of the jobs that they choose for their profession. There is a lower pay scale than men in comparable jobs. It's a whole other debate whether they choose those jobs or whether they don't. That could take another six minutes. Uh, yeah, but I do believe... They're, they're forced into those jobs. But, it's but, a conspiracy to make them become secretaries. But I do believe that the injustice, the unfairness of pay equity takes its toll on the older woman, uh, the older women in poverty. It's, un, it's illegal with our interpretation of the law, and it's certainly unfair. Diana Rahr, Phyllis Lafley, thank you both again. Night Watch will continue. Stay with us.